Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. In this episode, I'd like to show you the hyperlink function. It does exactly what it sounds like. It inserts a hyperlink in a formula. There's a little more to it than that because it has some cool options. You can link to a website, to a file on your computer or network, to a cell or a named range in a worksheet, to a new email message, and to a bookmark in a Word document. This function is available in any version or edition of Excel that you have, and it's in Google Sheets also. Now, you might be already familiar with the hyperlink tool on the ribbon bar or the control K shortcut. Those are fine, they still work, but there are times when you might want to insert a link in a formula. So let's take a look and see how it works. I'll start by showing you the syntax. It's pretty simple, equals hyperlink, and then there's two arguments. The first is the location, and the second argument is a friendly name. It's optional, but I really do recommend that you use it. So as an example, you might say, okay, uh, hyperlink, and there's the address of Google, and then the friendly name would be web search. So web search would be the actual text that shows up in the cell. Okay, so now we could do a few examples. On this sheet, we're keeping track of the tech investments in our investment empire. By the way, these are all random numbers, so don't read anything into this. Anyway, we want to link each of these names to the company websites, and we want to link the symbols to their page on the Wall Street Journal. So let's start off with the first one here. We'll come back to this in a bit. So the first symbol is for Apple. And I already have the URL in my clipboard. It'll save us a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is this. Actually, I'm going to just delete what's in that cell because I'm going to replace it. I'm going to say equals hyperlink. Open up quotes. Whenever you have text in a function or text in a formula, you have to put it in quotes. Otherwise, Excel isn't going to know what to do with it. And I'm just going to paste in. So this is the link for historical prices. Close the quote, comma, open the quote, and this is what I had originally, is the ticker symbol. So I'm going to close that quote, close the parenthesis tab, and there it is. And now I could do the same for the company site. Or if I don't want to retype it, I could say you know, equals hyperlink, open up the quote, and just enter. And there you have it. So now I want to use it. See, I got the little pointer hand so we know what it is. I'll click and boom, it opens up. And here are historical prices for Apple stock on the Wall Street Journal page. Let's go back to Excel for a moment. And now when I click the company name, it brings me to the company website. I could also link to my page on the Experts Exchange website. So let me just delete that. And I'll just replace contact as the friendly name. There we go. And Now it goes to my page on Experts Exchange. Now, linking externally isn't just for web pages. You can link to email. So when you click the cell, it opens up your email software and creates a new message. Now, your results may vary because not every email client works the same way. This will work in Microsoft Outlook, of course, and it's all Microsoft, but it might not work if you use a webmail program. Now, to do this, it uses a standard web protocol called mail -to. If you're familiar with HTML, this will look familiar. Let me give you the syntax first before we use it. So the syntax here of mail to gives you a whole bunch of options that you can use. So of these options, the first thing you need to specify is who the message is going to. All the other variables are optional. Now, here's an example of how you might use this. Now, this is on two lines. I just had to do this. Uh, to make room for it because I couldn't fit this all into one line. But you see we have mail to and then 
the email address. And then there's a question mark. So everything after the question mark is optional. If you're not going to use any of the stuff after the question mark, don't put in the question mark. So then you can have subject equals this. And if you're going to have, let's say, a carbon copy, a CC, you have ampersand CC. If you're going to have any of these other variables, it's always ampersand whatever the variable is equals and the thing that comes after it. There's no space uh, before or after the ampersand. So if you want to have space in the subject or space in the body, of course you can do that. But other than that, you don't want to have any spaces or the thing probably isn't going to work. Okay, so let's go and do this on the Excel sheet. So I'm going to go up here. I probably should have done this on the contact and the email on here. It doesn't matter. We're all linking anyway. So let's just remove that. So I'm going to say equals hyperlink. You didn't think I was going to put in my real email address in the YouTube video, did you? And see here, you could see that I have a space in the subject, but other than that, there's no spaces uh, in the mail to part of that. There we go. So now to send an email. So I'll just click on that and notice what it does. It's putting in who you're addressing it to and putting in the subject line, because those are the two things that I put into that function. You can also link from one worksheet to another. Now on this summary sheet, we have totals for product sales, and we can link them to the underlying source detail on the detail sheet. So here's the detail sheet, and there's all of that detail information. And here you can see the first cell for Blue Mountain Coffee, for the sales of Blue Mountain Coffee, is in cell F6. So on the summary sheet, we can use the function to set the link of the Blue Mountain total. Let's go back to summary. Now, you might already know that when you want to refer to a cell in a different worksheet, you have to add an exclamation mark after the sheet name. And with the hyperlink function, you also have to add a pound sign before the name. So here's what we're going to do. So there's Blue Mountain on B6. Let's go up here into the formula bar. So I'm going to say equals hyperlink. And what I'm going to do is, in quotes, I'm going to put in pound sign detail exclamation mark and F6. Close the quote, comma, open up the quote. We still want that to say Blue Mountain Total. Close the parenthesis. So for Columbia, let's go in there. I happen to know that the cell I'm going to, that I want to go to, is F73. So when I click Blue Mountain Total, boom, it goes there to that cell. Let's go back to summary. When I click Columbia Total, boom, it goes down to that F73. And by the way, you don't have to link to a specific cell address. You can link to a range name also. Let's go up to the top here. So what if you want to link to a different workbook? You can do that, and that other workbook doesn't even have to be open when you're doing this. So we have a separate file with contact info of all the sales reps listed on this detail sheet, and we can use the hyperlink function to link to their records in that workbook. So let's go over here to Amy Pond, and I'll just go in here to the formula bar, And just to confuse us, we don't use a pound sign when linking to a different file. This syntax works the same like in any other 3D formula that you would use in Excel. So I'm going to open up a left square bracket. So I happen to know the cell reference that I'm going to. So I close that. Now you notice that has a hyperlink, so let me click it. And now it goes to that other workbook, and it goes to Amy. Finally, let's link to a Microsoft Word document. So let's say we have documents for each of our sales reps, maybe contractual information or something. We can link each of their names to those documents. So let's go with this one here. 
And I have this file, I know what the name is. There we go, and I'm going to click that. And it opens up this Word document. Now, I also said in the beginning that we can go not just, we can link not just to a Word document, but to a specific place in a Word document, to a bookmark. Let's go and do that. Maybe for the address. The syntax is that I have to use left square brackets. So inside the quotation marks, I'm going to open up the bracket. So I have the name of the file in square brackets. There's the name of that bookmark. And then there's that friendly text that we want in the worksheet. So now when I click it, it goes to that bookmark. So this is the same document that we saw before, that same sample document, and we linked to that particular bookmark. Just as with any formula, the arguments in the hyperlink function can be other cells in a workbook or generated by other formulas. And that includes any of the variables in the mail to protocol. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.